Alright, what's up everybody? Back with another episode of Everyday Hoops. I hope you guys are having a good day. Today, we're going to be talking about the NBA All-Star game that happened last night. Talk about the whole All-Star weekend in general, kind of. Uh, then we're going to talk about Russell Westbrook officially going to sign with the LA Clippers once he reaches a buyout. And the new men's college basketball rankings came out just a little while ago, so we're going to talk about that as well. Um, yeah. We're excited. Let's just get right into it with the All Star Game from yesterday. Team Giannis, Team LeBron. Uh, start off with the draft. The draft was very fun. This concept was, yeah, the concept was a great concept. Um, the draft was really fun. LeBron and Giannis on stage, picking picking everyone up. They're sitting in the chairs behind them. Uh, Giannis is really funny. He picked Ja Morant, even though he will he turned into a starter and not. He wasn't on the bench anymore. That was fun. Uh, LeBron and Giannis going back and forth with each other. Um, Damian Lillard was the first pick by Giannis, which is very surprising. You know, everyone thought he was going to go Drew or, you know, but he picked Damian. And then LeBron picking Anthony Edwards first who was a big, must have, Anthony Edwards must have felt like the man after that. First pick by LeBron. That would have been, yeah, and then Jaron Jackson Jr. was the last pick of the reserves, which makes a lot of sense. I would have picked Jaron Jackson last as well. Uh, no disrespect, but, I mean, you know. And then the starters, uh, LeBron going with all size, getting Jokic and Embiid. I'm surprised Giannis didn't get Jokic. It's really surprised Giannis didn't go or try to get Jokic. But LeBron got both of them. They picked Kyrie as well and Luka. I mean, look at the teams. LeBron's team obviously was better, you know. But, uh, yeah, Giannis's team was just, you know, more hungry, I guess. Uh, the first quarter, the end of the first quarter, uh, it was a 46-46 game, you know, all-star games. First quarters don't really provide a lot of defense. <laughs> First halves don't really provide a lot of defense. Just a lot of dunks and threes and crazy stuff going on. It was 46-46 in the first. Second quarter, Team Giannis won 53-46 after Dame hit a couple shots um, to kind of seal his game off. And the third quarter happens, and Jason Tatum and Donovan Mitchell take over. <laughs> Jason Tatum and Donovan Mitchell look like Steph and Clay. Out there, they were dominating that third quarter. Um, yeah, Tatum and Mitchell combined for 38 of the 59 team Giannis points scored in the third quarter. And in the fourth quarter, uh, Team LeBron actually outscored Team Giannis. But of course, Team Giannis only needed 24 points. Uh, and Damian Lillard ended. They tried to end it with a half court shot so bad, but Dame ultimately ended the game. And Team Giannis beats Team LeBron 184-175. Team LeBron's first loss in the All-Star Draft era. Um, a lot of things going on in this game. Giannis only literally played the first possession. Got a dunk and then subbed himself out because of his wrist injury. Said he's going to New York today to get tests on his wrist and hopefully he'll be okay. But yeah, he just wanted, you know, he just wanted to be a part of it. You know, he was coaching from the sideline probably. <laughs> what it was. But yeah, he got his, he scored the first points and that was it. Uh, then also, LeBron didn't play in the second half because he got hurt. He hurt his hand on a block, trying to block Shea's layup, which he did. Um, actually, no, he didn't. He didn't technically get a block for it, but yeah, he only played the first half. Went, had 13 points, had a nice off-the-backboard dunk, hit a deep, deep three. And then, yeah, really came down to Team Giannis, Jason Tatum. Um, won All-Star Game MVP, putting up an All-Star Game record, 55 points. With 10 rebounds, 6 assists, shooting 22 for 31, 10 for 18 from 3. Um, that third quarter, he was excellent. Um, and yeah, he was just dominating really the entire game. Like, even from the start of the game, he was, every time LeBron was dunking, Tatum would dunk one right back. And yeah, I mean, it was an honor for him to win. Um, also game MVP, the Kobe Bryant also game MVP, which makes a lot of sense why Tatum went out and won that for him. He also debuted his new shoes yesterday, the JT1s. Which look pre actually look pretty nice, you know. I, I I gotta give it to him. He looked really nice. But yeah, he was amazing this game. Donovan Mitchell, who was my pick to an All Star Game MVP, could have won MVP if Jason Tatum didn't go bonkers. Donovan Mitchell finished with forty and ten assists, between fifteen for twenty five and eight three pointers. He was on fire. Dame had twenty six points off the bench. He literally was just lighting up shots. He shot eight for twenty from three. He started like one for seven, one for eight, but then heated up. Uh, you see, Pascal Siakam at 12. A lot of marketing put on a show for his Utah home crowd. 13 points, had some dunks. John Moran 
at six points. I think all of them were probably dunks. He had a nice 360 dunk. And there was one almost highlight that would have been crazy. Jason Tatum in the first quarter threw it like threw a pass like behind his back, to, and Ja was gonna go up and get it, but Ja slipped, and the pass was like super super high. But if that would have meant if that would have went through, that would have been an insane dunk. Um, but yeah, that was really yeah that was it for Team Giannis. And then yeah, Team LeBron, uh, Jalen Brown at thirty five, fourteen and five off the bench, debuting his mask. It was very small. I didn't realize the mask. I never seen a mask that small. So, yeah, I mean, it looked pretty cool. It looked like he was wearing a blindfold <laughs> on the court. But either way, um, he played great. It was an amazing sequence at the end of the third. Him and Jason Tatum, went the last like two minutes, just went back and forth with each other. And Jalen Brown was giving Jaylen, Jason Tatum some buckets, man. He really was, and he was locking him down. But in the last possession, Jason Tatum had a nice step back three. Kind of made Jalen Brown stumble a little bit and then locked him up in the last position in the third quarter. That was really fun, them going at it. And everyone was just standing on the other side of the court, just standing there watching them. You know, it, it was so fun. But yeah, Jalen Brown at 35. Kyrie finished with 32, 7, and 15 assists. The layups he was hitting was just ridiculous. Like, he would just go to the rim and just do something. And it would, roll, it would go in. Joel Embiid had 32, 6, and 4. Uh, let's see, Tyrese Halliburton at 18 off the bench. He was hot in the fourth quarter, trying to lead Team LeBron to when he hit four threes. Uh, Anthony Edwards had 12. Julius Randle had 11. Yeah, Jokic was kind of out there passing the ball. Jokic did not want to shoot. He took four shots, right? Which is surprising. He took four because he was really just passing the entire game. Uh, he even had a funny quote. He said because he was drafted second to last in the draft before, just right before Lloyd Marketing. He was like, "Yeah, I would draft me last too. I don't know what to do <laughs> in these games." Because like, you look at the All Star games, Jokic has been in. He hasn't really done much. Like, he's just kind of been out there because he's such a like a. I feel like a team oriented kind of player in the All Star games more for like highlights and deep step back threes and crossing people up and dunking. That's not Jokic's game. So Jokic's just kind of out there just passing the ball around. Just like, I don't know. I don't know what to do. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what to do. Which is fine. I mean, as long as he got the All Star appearance, you know, that's all that matters. And then, yeah, Luca only had four points. Luca didn't really play much in this game either because Luca's kind of the same. Luca's kind of more, you know, just chills out during All Star weekend and doesn't want to get hurt. But yeah, Paul George putting up a crazy all-star performance. He, had, he shot 4 for 13. It was 0 for 9 from 3. He was literally just trying to light it up out there and just couldn't. You know, just couldn't. But yeah, 184, 175 was the end game. Tatum wins all-star MVP. Very fun all-star game. Um, funny comments after the game. Mike Malone being like, that was the worst basketball I've ever seen. And then Jalen Brown being like, yeah, that was that was not basketball. That was bad. But yeah, all spending really should it's just supposed to be for fun. And the players are having fun out there, so win at the end of the day, win. I know people love the competition and it'll probably be more fun if it was more competitive and like you know, that's the most fun when it's like an actual competitive game with people actually trying out there and the best of the best are actually playing each other out there. Um and pl- actually taking each other seriously. But at the end at the end, at the end of the day, it's like, you know, the All-Star game is just supposed to be for fun. People are just supposed to get their highlights off and, you know, all this stuff. So, honestly, I don't really care if it's not, like, a competitive. Everyone's really, really, really locked in. You know, it's just go out there, have fun, you know. Like, put on a, a show for the fans. And that's what they did. They put on a show for the fans. Um, and they raised money for charity as well. So, yeah, that's more important. But yeah, it was a fun All Star game. Fun All Star week. All Star week was pretty solid. You know, the Rising Stars game was very fun. Uh, the dunk contest, Matt McClung, great dunk contest. Deep dunk contest was cool. The All Star game was fun. Um, yeah, just a, a good All Star weekend. Good All Star weekend. Um, and yeah, now is the three day break before um, we get back to real NBA games. You know, so that'll be. Very excited for that. Um, yeah. Next news we got is one that just broke this morning. Russell Westbrook is planning to sign with the Los Angeles Clippers after completing a buyout with the Utah Jazz Woj. First one on it. Which, um, kind of not really surprising. You know, because the teams that are interested, it was the Clippers, the Heat, the Bulls, and the Wizards. The Heat already signed Kevin Love, and they said they were prioritizing on. You know, big men. They're also going to sign Cody Zeller. Um, 
and then came, coming out about Russell Westbrook meeting up with Kawhi and Paul George, which kind of already kind of being put in place, and now it's official. He's going to be an L.A. Clipper, which makes a lot of sense. I mean, you look at it, look at it. It'll probably be his best chance of all the teams that wanted him. His best chance to contribute to an actual playoff team and win. You know, he's already got the connections with Paul George. Um, you know, it's kind of like he's kind of the player they kind of need. I feel like they kind of need a player like Russell Westbrook. It just makes total sense. And he goes, he stay, he gets to stay in L.A. and he goes to the Clippers. You know, they'll have that rivalry. It's at April fifth. The Lakers and Clippers play each other. So, two months from now, it's gonna be a, a lot of fireworks. Hopefully, in that game. Um, but yeah, this just makes a lot of sense. A very good move from Russell Westbrook. You know, getting to see him out back on a playoff team, back to playing actual basketball and competing. And he's got so many play- pieces around him that he doesn't really need to go as hard and doesn't really need to have the ball as much because he can. He has a Kawhi and Paul George. He's got to take the ball out of his hands, and he has a lot of shooter, good players around him. You know that he can kind of be successful. Where he can kind of find other players that can actually hit shots instead of being on the Lakers. But yeah, I think this is just going to be a really good opportunity and role for him. You know, he I feel like he really fits with this Clipper team. You know, and he's kind of the piss, the the missing piece they've been wanting. They've been wanting more of a score, pa- scoring and passing, you know, type of point guard. You know, they haven't really had that this season. And so, what's supposed to be able to go, still go get twenty, and then also get like eight, nine assists, not t- at the same time, but he has the ability to do both. Um, it's just huge for the Clippers and really helps. Not only himself, but helps everyone out else out. And I really hope this works out for us. I really hope he goes over there and, you know, plays really well and gets his value back up, you know. Because I feel like this is a really good opportunity for him. This is the best opportunity he's going to get to do that. Hopefully he takes it and runs with it. And, yeah, I'm very excited to see him out there with Paul George, Kawhi, and that team. I feel like it's a, it's a perfect fit, I feel like, right? Like... I feel like it's a really, really good fit. Um, now we're going to college basketball. Um, yesterday there was a few games on. Yesterday some ranked teams going against each other. Um, I watched the NC State and UNC. That game was a, that was a really good game. Uh, North Carolina State, the twenty third ranked team in the nation. North Carolina unranked after coming in as the number one team um, preseason, and now they're yeah. <laughs> They're not even ranked. Um, yeah, it was a really good first half. NC State was up by one at the end of the first half. In the second half, it was very close to start. You know, NC State was making some shots. But North Carolina, Mando Baycott, was, and Caleb Love were really good in this game. Um, Jarkel Joyner from NC State well, had an excellent game. He was just making so many shots when they needed him to. Um, and there's a point after the five-minute mark. When it was a tie game, 60 to 60, Caleb Love just hit a free throw to tie the game at 60. At from that point on, NC State goes on a 17 to 9 run to win the game 77 to 69. Again, Jarkel Joyner, who was huge, DJ Burns Jr. Really good. Um, and yeah, Casey Morsel finishing off with the layup to kind of seal the game. NC State wins 77 to 69. And the win against their rival. Again, Jarko Joyner at 29 points. Sheena Lim for 21 from the field. He was great. DJ Burns had 18 and 3 points. 18 points and 3 rebounds. Uh, to Quavion, Quavion Smith, who's an NBA draft prospect, 12 points. He didn't shoot well, just 5 for 16. But he was doing a lot of other things. He had some nice passes and good defense. And then Casey Morsel, 12 points. But yeah, North Carolina, um, Caleb Love finished with 23 points. He shot 7 for 17, 4 for 8 from 3. I like. I think Caleb Smith's pretty solid. Pretty solid player. Might be a second round pick as a point guard, that kind of explosive point guard. I think he's very solid though. Orlando Bay got out sixteen and fourteen. But yeah, they couldn't get, get much from anywhere else. Like R.J. Davis shot just two for thirteen. Leaky Black at nine and eight. Um, their bench had seven points, and that was all Puff Johnson. Um, we got North Carolina State shot forty five percent from the field. They forced thirteen turnovers as well, and we can do that. You know, that's that's huge. You know, NC State is a very, very fun team as well. Like, the energy in there was great. 
Um, the other game I watched, number two, Houston taking on Memphis. And, uh, yeah, Houston got off to a really good start. They led 32-21 at the end of the first half. Second half, though, Memphis, Memphis really came out and tried to upset these dudes. Memphis um, got the lead down to as many as um, many as four early in the second half. But then Houston finishes the game off really well. But then it got down to a five-point game with 344 left. Um, but then Houston, the last minute, hits their free throws, and they win 72-64. to um, Marcus Sasser finished with 20 points, shooting five for nine. Um, he's had a very good season um, for Houston. And then Jawan Roberts had a really good game as well, 20-12. and 12. They're big men. Um, played really well. And Jamal Sheet also had 10 points. But Houston's just a really good team. You know, you look at an offense, they got the explosion. They got Jamal Sheet has been very good. Marcus Sasser, um, those, those guards are very, very good. And they got just a really good built all-around team. And their defense, their defense is what they really rely on. And they are very good defensively. Uh, Memphis played very well, though. Memphis fought hard. Um, Elijah McCaden finished with 20 points. Um, Devin, De- Andre Williams. I was say Devin Williams. DeAndre Williams had 18 points. But Houston just closed this game out because they're, they're just a veteran team. You look at them and they know they're a veteran team. They've been very far the last two or three years in the tournament. They have a really good coach, Kelvin Sampson. And a really good program. You know, they've built a very good program. And they win. They're now 25 and 2. And speaking of that, the new standings, uh, rankings, um, NCAA have come out just about an hour ago. And Houston, which no surprise, is now the number one team in the nation again. 25 and 2. They're on a seven game win streak. They have been phenomenal this season. And are going to be a tough team, tough out. Probably going to be a top seed. And. The tournament, uh, Alabama, who was number one, now falls to number two, uh, 24 after losing their first game as a number one seed to Tennessee. Uh, Kansas jumps up, moving from five to three, and Purdue falls from three to five at 24-4. UCLA is still number four at 23-4 and four with a six-game win streak. Um, Virginia moves up one spot to the sixth spot at 21-4. and four. They're on a four-game winning streak. They almost got upset by Notre Dame on Saturday. But they win that game, so they stay in there. Texas falls. Texas was number six. They fall now to eight at 21-6. and six. Yeah, Texas fall. Marquette and Tennessee trade places. Tennessee now 11. Marquette 10 after Tennessee lost to Kentucky yesterday or on Saturday um, in a big matchup. Um, Miami moves up two from 15 to 13. Kansas State falls two from 12 to 14. Um, Indiana had a big drop from going from 14. To down to 17. UConn jumps up to uh, Providence jumps up 4. Northwestern has the biggest jump from 20. Um, they jump up 5. They form unranked to now 21 in the nation. They had some big wins. They upset Purdue when they were number 1. They had another win. I think they beat Indiana um, as well. Um, they've been playing really well. Iowa State drops 4. Iowa State drops from 19 to 23 after losing to Kansas State. Um, and Texas A&M also gets it to the rankings now at 25. And also, NC State dropped from the rankings, going from 23rd. Now they're unranked, even though they did beat North Carolina yesterday. Um, and the Florida Atlantic also dropped from the rankings from 25. Now they're out. Um, but yeah, this um, this is a very tight season this year. We all know I've been saying it. You know, this season has been super close. Um, and it's been very good, you know, and it's only going to keep getting better now. Um, looking at it right now, uh, the team, I mean, Kansas, I really like Kansas. Kansas is a really good team. They just have so many guys that can do a lot of things. Jalen Wilson is a contention for player of the year. Uh, Grady Dick has become a great draft prospect and a buggy getter. KJ Adams is really good. They have, they were. Rainy champs from last year, and they haven't really fallen off. Um, yeah, this team is gonna be very scary. I feel like in the tournament, um, I really like their team. UCLA is of course always there. They have Jaime Jaquez still there, still playing really well. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of good team. Baylor is still very uh solid. I really like Kansas State. I really like watching Kansas State. Um, as well, there might be a sleeper team that might. 
you know, upset a few teams. Um, but yeah, I'm very excited. The Bracketology keeps updating, and I think this is March 14th. Be the day where the selection Sunday or the brackets will be released. And I'm very excited for that. And a lot of stuff can change, especially with this season. A lot of stuff can change. Um, just like that. Even today, we have some good games. Or we have a good game today. Um, with Kansas and TCU playing tonight at nine on ESPN. Um, very excited to watch that game again. I really like Kansas. You know, it's a big game for them today. Also, Louisville and Duke are playing on ESPN. Louisville has been horrible. <laughs> Louisville is a four and twenty three record. Um, yeah, they're they're not they're not they're not good. <laughs> At the end of the day, they're just they're not good, you know. But hey, what can you do? <laughs> you know. Um, but yeah. New rankings. Houston's number one. Very excited for today and tomorrow as well. Tomorrow we got some really good games, as well. Baylor and Kansas State are playing. Uh, Tennessee, Texas A and M, Marquette, Creighton. Iowa State, Texas, um, a lot of ranked games against each other, so I'm very excited for that, um, but yeah, that's it for today, um, tomorrow will be the power rankings episode, I'm ranking every team, um, every NBA team, um, yeah, there's a power ranking, you guys know what power rankings are, ranking every team, you know, so yeah, I'm gonna get started on that, um, I'm gonna have that for you tomorrow, yeah, very excited. And then I'm going to have another episode where I'm talking about predictions for the second half of the year. And so, yeah, that's it. Hope you guys enjoy. Yeah, see you guys tomorrow.